Greetings. Welcome to Montage. I am your host, Kyle. And this beautiful specimen that, that we have right here behind me is the Corsair 4000D Airflow Tempered Glass Mid-Tower ATX Case. Now that name is a mouthful, but today we're going to find out, is it worth it? So let's jump right on in. I really like this case. I, I like it a lot. Like, I think it looks really good. Um, almost hurts me that this actually isn't my computer. I built this for live streaming for my church. But it makes me want to upgrade my case because it's just a little cuter. That can bring us to the differences between the variants and the 4000 cases. So you have the 4000D, 4000D Airflow, and then the 4000X, which is the one that I would be going for for my own personal taste. Again, this is for my church, so we weren't trying to do anything really fancy, just trying to get like a bare bones case that would support all the other components that we're putting inside of it. The Airflow case is just this front panel essentially. So only difference between the 4000D and the 4000D Airflow is this. This has all these triangles in it that just provides more airflow. So for the 4000D, it's just a solid sheet of steel that goes along the front. The 4000X has the RGB and has the IQ module built into the case, but this front panel on that one is just completely glass. So you can see all the RGB lights that are inside of it. That one comes with three 120 millimeter RGB lights that are in the front. While these other two variants only have two 120 fans and they're non-colored, they're non-RGB. So they have one that they put in the middle and the other one that they put at the rear exhaust. On this case specifically, I added another 120 millimeter fan only because I just had it sitting around. I went for the airflow grill for this build because we were going for getting the most out of the least amount of money. So with more natural airflow going through the system, I don't have to spend more money on more robust cooling systems because everything is just kind of open on this and I'll get to that in a second. The airflow version and the non-airflow version both cost $80, but to get the RGB version, that only costs $40 more at $120, so. These are all very reasonably priced. The case is super rigid, it's super solid. Like it doesn't feel cheap at all, which is something that I was kind of expecting for an $80 case, but its construction is steel, plastic, and then you got tempered glass again, this side panel. And it only seems like it's plastic on this little front bezel and like on the legs and also the back legs. But again, anywhere I touch, I push, it's not any noise that is being made. Now, if I come over to my case and compare those two, everywhere I push, oh, don't mind that. Also, don't mind that drawer because it, it won't stay closed. But everywhere I push, there's some type of noise that's being made. So with all those loose fitting parts, it is adding vibration when the hard drive is spinning, when the fans are spinning, when it's just doing what a computer does. So for this, it makes it whisper silent. Now for this case, it's rather loud and it actually bothers me. So now I'm actually gonna turn it on so you hear how silent it is. If you ever wanted to switch out the front panel with a different front panel from one of the other variants, you can just pop it off real easy. And then under this, you see your filter. So you have a front filter, dust filter, I should say. Take that off. You have your top 
dust filter comes off very easily. It's just magnetically placed on there. There's no filter for the rear, but there is another dust filter that is on the bottom of the case that is actually, I don't wanna set it down, but that is there for the power supply unit. And that can also come off pretty easily. And just slide it back in place. Oh, while well, I'm here, you've got your rubber stops on the feet, which is very typical of probably any other case that you'll find because you wanna keep down on vibrations. Now up front, we're looking at the 220 millimeter fans that it comes with. Now one was in the rear, but I moved both up front just so it can match. And you can see that there's space for 320 millimeter fans up front, but you can also do 240 millimeter fans up front. And you can fit the comparable radiators up front for water cooling. Now on the roof, it's a slightly different story. You have space for two 120 millimeter fans and you also have space for two 140 millimeter fans, but you also have space for radiators up top on the roof as well. So you can have radiators on the front panel or you can have radiators in the roof, which makes this case really nice. And here are the front panel peripherals, which is really the roof peripherals. You obviously have the power button, restart button. You have a combination microphone and headphone jack, which would be a TRS and a TRRS port. You have the USB 3.0 type A and the USB 3.1 type C, which makes this case stand apart from many other cases, especially at this price point. The only other case at this price point that I know of that offers the type C front panel is the NZXT H510, which I would still choose this over that. And that is mostly because of this whole roof setting by itself. So on the H510, you only have that small little pocket that has a 120 millimeter opening for heat exhaust from the top. Now you can put a radiator on there or you just put a fan on there, but it's just that one little portion. Um, so I honestly prefer this because again, it's more open, more airflow. This does cost $10 more than the NZXT model, but this will allow less heat to be trapped in the case. Now with fans, you have fans blowing things back, of course, but if everything's open and the front is more open is also the other reason on the NZXT. The whole front panel is mostly covered and there's just like a side little slot that allows air to flow through on one side of the case. This has airflow on both sides of the case, even if you go with the non-airflow version of this case. So I think in many ways, this is a better case for keeping your system cool. Now for the rear fan, you can only have one rear fan like many other cases, but this can only be a 120 millimeter fan. You can't expand to a 140. However, you do have these slots so that you can adjust in the Y position for wherever you want the fan. It's not much travel, but you can do that. Now what you also see in the rear is the seven expansion slots that you have, but you also see that you have two vertical expansion slots. Now that is an additional cost to buy the bracket to be able to do a vertical slot for your graphics card, but you do have that option. Another thing I can say about this case is the subtleties. Like I like that they didn't go overboard with branding on anything. Even the Corsair logo is very small, but they have the little 4000D badge, which isn't even just on main display because when this cover is on, you don't see that. And you have another one of those badges on the inside of the side panel where the tempered glass is. But also speaking of the subtleties, I love these 
screws that they used on here. One, I like that they have the little like neon green, neon yellow, whatever color you want to call it, which matches the little Corsair tab on the top that you pull the dust filter off with. It just adds just a tiny little bit of flare. They have it so that it doesn't just fall out. Like you don't have to take these off. You don't have to worry about losing them. You can screw it all the way out if you need to, but it's just a few turns and then it's off. And then you pop it out. It's the same kind of knobs that you see on the front panel that uh, attach to these little ports and you just pop that out. And this, they make it also pretty simple. So you have all these little hooks, they kind of just fall in place and then it slides in so that it stays locked into position. You don't have to worry about glass shifting or anything while it's in place. You see here that you also have those same triangles that you have on the front grill to add more airflow. This is the power supply that's under here. So that gets pretty warm. So this is good that it adds that air. You also have the fan on the bottom of the power supply that keeps it cool. But then you have these little screws here. Now what these for are for your solid state drives if you so choose to display those up front. But if not, you can keep them on the other side, on the other panel, on the butt end of the motherboard and you can keep them out of sight. But you know what you could do? Put a cute little rubber ducky in there. And then you can see it all the time while you're working but I'm not actually going to, because again, this isn't my computer, so I'm gonna take that back out. I also really like this pass-through that it has from the front end of the motherboard to the butt end on the other side panel. So that's where all the cords are housed and the cable management system is all set up on that other side. So one negative that I can point out is if you look at the top panel here, the roof of everything, there isn't a lot of space between the roof and your memory cards and in general, the motherboard. Like there's really not a lot of space for fans. And especially if you had a radiator set up where you had multiple fans on the top and bottom of the radiator, that could get in the way. If you look at it from the top, it seems like the slots are over far enough from the motherboard so maybe they did design that in so that it wouldn't interfere but maybe if you had a motherboard that stands a little taller maybe that could be an issue so just something to consider now for the booty in taking off this panel again same kind of screws same kind of tabs that don't fall out which is nice now this is truly one of the cleanest butt ends that I've seen. It's very shallow, very thin, but there's still a lot of room to put everything. So you have, this is that pass through that I showed you on the other end, and it's like pretty big, like you can fit, this is the main 24 pin connection. Um, this is the biggest cord that I would ever be running over. And it has all these little like, tabs just all over the place like almost everywhere even down here on the bottom and all those are for using zip ties that is supplied with the case and you can zip everything down if anything's in the way because again with it being so shallow what i found initially was when i put the side panel back on it was some cords were sticking too far out and it was creating a bulge in the side panel. So be careful of that. Make sure you tie down as much as you can. And just the channel itself also has these straps, these Velcro, stra Velcro straps that you can strap down, keep everything in place. It also comes with three additional of these straps. You have your two 25 inch base for 
solid state drives and then you also have two three and a half inch bays for your hard drives now this you can take out move over you can really only move it from left to right like there's not much you can do there but these again you can move to the other side and you can have them on display right where i showed you and again has these similar screw tabs that have a little flash to them so you also have a little space here to put any rgb lighting or any led lighting anything like that you have not too much space on the sides but definitely down here you can put something put a little something up here also but with it being black i think it would look much better if you had a white case for rgb lighting because with that you have a little more reflection in the light gives a little more pop so one more notable i will say the tempered glass does have a slight tint so if you're trying to see things on the inside it may have some obstruction of view now again this is just the church computer we weren't trying to do all the fancy stuff not trying to make it look sexy but there is some rgb lighting that's on the motherboard by itself and you can see that now so now i'm going to put on the glass siding and now you can't really see it nor can you really see the duck because again it's tinted yes i still have the plastic on because I still have to transport it to the church and I'm scared of getting it scratched and or getting my fingerprints all over it. So leave me alone. So to answer the question, is the Corsair 4000D Airflow tempered glass mint tower ATX case worth it? You gosh darn right it is. All the cable management, all the design and offsets, even having the ability to do a vertical graphics card. It has so much in this case. I really couldn't recommend anything else but this. Again, it's $80. And even the RGB version, which is only $120, like I would highly recommend that for anybody that's trying to get into the market of making a super sexy case, which is what I will be doing hopefully in the near future. But right now, I just don't need it. So, if you're looking forward to buying this case, feel free to use the link in my description below. So thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. I hope this covered any bases that you had questions about, but if you have more questions, feel free to ask me in the comments and I will answer anything that I can. If you wanna give me a thank you for making this video, feel free to subscribe to the channel if you already haven't. Hit the bell for notifications so you get notifications for all of my new videos and hit the like button because that does great for the algorithms apparently that's, that's what they tell me join me next time see me soon is the elephant heavy i'm coming back baby